Hello and welcome to a Russell Reads. Today we have The Way We Fall by Megan Crew. And The Way We Fall is a part of the raffle copter that's going on right now, so follow the link that is provided and head on over and enter for your chance to win a Kindle Fire 7 preloaded with awesome dystopian reads, including The Way We Fall. All right, and here is our blurb. It starts with an itch you just can't shake. Then comes a fever and a tickle in your throat. A few days later, you'll be babbling your secrets and chatting with strangers like they're old friends. Three more, and the paranoid hallucination kick in. And then you're dead. When 16-year-old Kaylin lets her best friend leave for school without saying goodbye, she never dreams that she might not see him again. Then a strange virus begins to sweep through her small island community, infecting old and young alike. As the dead pile up, the government quarantines the island. No one can leave, and no one can come back. Cut off from the world, the remaining islanders must fend for themselves. Supplies are dwindling, fatalities rise, and panic is turning into violence. With no cure in sight, Kaylin knows that their only hope for survival is to band together. Desperate to save her home, she joins forces with a formal rival and opens up her heart to a boy she once feared. But as the virus robs her of friends and family, Kaylin realizes her efforts might be in vain. How can she fight an enemy that's too small to see? Now, a quick note, the story is written in journal entries and it is beginning October, and this excerpt is beginning with the October 13th entry, and it's set in Canada, and in Canada, they do Thanksgiving in October. Yeah, okay. We were supposed to have Thanksgiving dinner today. Mom surprised us by showing us the turkey that she started to saw and thaw in secret yesterday. She must have bought it before Gav's group ransacked the grocery store. We've got a lot to be thankful for, she said. The five of us are still healthy and your father's making progress with a vaccine. Honestly, we had made way more to complain about than to celebrate, but it was a relief to see her smiling. So I said I'd help with the cookie cooking and Meredith volunteered too. Drew begged off, claiming he was busy with something on the computer, but I caught a glimpse of him slipping off out the back door a few minutes later. We started getting ready for dinner a little after lunchtime, even though dad said the earliest he'd be home was six. Mom was preparing the turkey over by the oven. I was peeling potatoes by the sink. Meredith was setting the table. I was telling her just to use regular knives and forks that we didn't have anything fancy for holidays, but Mom went still. Before I had a chance to ask her what was up, she walked right out of the kitchen. The turkey was sitting there on the cutting board with, the half, with half the stuffing still in the bowl. I figured she must have needed to go to the bathroom, but when I finished with the potatoes and washed the slimy feeling off my hands, she still hadn't come back. Meredith wanted to know what she could do now just that the table was set. Why don't you take a break, I said. Go play Nintendo if you want. Mom wasn't anywhere downstairs and the bathroom was empty. Her bedroom door was closed. I knocked. Don't come in, she said right away. What's going on, I said. Do you need anything? No, she said. I'm just feeling a little bit off. I just need a little time to myself, okay? She hadn't sneezed or coughed, but all of a sudden I understood. She was afraid she had the virus. My whole body tensed up. Mom must have sensed I was still standing there. Don't worry, hun, she said firmly. Go downstairs. I'm sure you and Meredith can get the rest of dinner together. I'm just going to take a rest. I turned and started down the stairs, my heart pounding so loud I could hardly hear anything else. I have to tell dad, I thought. That was all I could think over and over. Get dad, get dad, he'll know what to do. Telling Meredith would have scared her, so I just said I was going out for a bit and she should keep playing her game. It wouldn't take more than an, half an hour, I thought. Drive to the hospital, grab dad, drive back. I took the keys off the hook and went to the car. The whole way there, my heartbeat chased my thoughts through my head. Mom couldn't really be sick. She didn't have any symptoms. She was just nervous and being extra careful. Dad would see that. He'd tell her she was fine and she'd calm down and we'd have a normal Thanksgiving dinner. But then I'd remembered the way she stiffened up and walked out without a word, and my pulse would thump even louder, and I had to tell myself the story all over again. I figure it's a miracle I managed not to drive into a telephone pole or a fire hydrant, but I reached the hospital in one piece. The parking lot was jammed. I wove back and forth across the rows twice, searching for a space. I'd never seen the lot even half full before. Some of the cars had a fine layer of dirt all over them, like they'd been there a month without being used, which maybe they had. Maybe the people who had driven them there had, had gone to get help and never come back out. I had to park a block away. I ran from there to the hospital doors. I hadn't been inside the hospital since those couple days during our summer visit last year when I got a bad fever. 
usually there's a nurse or an orderly at the desk in the reception room and or a mom and a dad with a crying kid or one of the elderly islanders who's come for a checkup never more than a couple people it's quiet almost peaceful in a disinfected artificial light sort of way today it was crazy the reception room was so packed i couldn't make out the desk only a crowd of people shifting restlessly voices were echoing off the wall i hadn't made it two steps from the door when mrs stanfield from the fourth grade came in behind me with a girl who was skipping and chattering between her sneezes. They rushed past me into the room. My daughter needs help, Mrs. Stanfield shouted, and someone yelled back, everyone needs help, wait your turn, and someone else started sobbing. All around people were coughing and sneezing and rice, rasping their fingers over their clothes to get at some itch they couldn't quite scratch away. The disinfectant smell was still there, but overwhelmed by sweat and something sour that made my stomach turn. I'd been in such a panic when I left the house that I'd forgotten my face mask. I felt like I'd walked in there naked, but no way I was turning back and going home and starting over, so I held my sleeve up to my nose and squeezed into the room. A nurse with a mask, a plastic gown, like a thin raincoat, and long plastic gloves was drawing a blood sample from an older woman who couldn't stop rubbing her chin. The nurse had a cart of labeled samples behind her, probably for testing to see who really had the virus. They all have it, I thought. For a second, I couldn't breathe. It felt like the virus had to be all around me, clouds of it in the air. Dad wasn't in that room, and obviously the nurse was too busy to help, so I pressed my arm to my face as tightly as I could and pushed through the crowd to the end of the hall. And that has been our reading from The Way We Fall. Don't forget to enter the rafflecopter, and I will see you next time on A Russell Reads. Bye-bye.